It was when I was in second grade or so. I don't exactly remember what grade it was. Over the weekend, we went to a gathering, to an Islamic gathering, and there I learned that in the future, maybe possibly in the near future, we Muslims would fight the Jews and they would hide behind stones and trees and we Muslims would kill the Jews until the stones and trees say, oh Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But there is one specific tree known as the Gargat tree and the Jews hide behind that tree and the tree does not betray them. Let's just put aside how ridiculous it sounds that trees and stones are talking and obviously Muhammad uh, spoke that those words for a very primitive audience back in the 7th century because people don't need to hide behind stones and trees anymore in today's time. And let's not even talk about how a tree literally sides with the Jews. <laughs> but putting aside all the absurdity, I learned this at such a young age. I don't know if I can properly explain what it did to me, but I might be able to explain what that does to a human to people, to a group of people if they grow up with such a teaching. Yes, a Muslim apologist might come, just as they did in my tweet, and say, well, this is only about, you know, Jews at the end and the specific group that will fight you. But no, all of that is just not true. And if those Muslim apologists were honest, they would see what I'm talking about and what everyone else finds so terrifying about this specific tradition. If you think about it from a non-Muslim perspective, from an ex-Muslim perspective, it is extremely problematic because no, this is not just about a specific group in the end times. And even if it were so, what this does is to teach every Muslim child out there that we are back in the new series of apostate prostate, the uh, rhino nose. And uh, as you can see again, he's uh, he's talking about oh, uh, this is not a specific type of Jews, it's all the Jews, which is actually wrong. Uh, plus the Quran says that labels the pagans to fight the polytheists, meaning the uh, polytheists of Mecca who uh, brought Prophet Muhammad out of his home and fought against him. So the Prophet Muhammad wants to do it in self-defense. Plus I want right now with one, uh, the rhino head, uh, sorry, the rhino nose and the opposite prostate to condemn Israel for killing uh, Palestinian children and innocent people in its land and occupying other areas. I would like him to condemn it and if he does not condemn it then he would approve himself to be a supporter and funded by Zionist Jews which is why he can't even speak a word against them because um, they will kill him, right? The Jews will kill everyone. So <clears throat> right now let us go. If you see the Zionist political violence here, this is Zionist political violence refers to acts of violence or terror committed by Zionists. Okay, they tell the period of Zionist political violence started on June 30, 1924 and continued on a sporadic basis until September 17, year uh, 1948. There have not been any acts of Zionist political violence since the time of Israeli war of independence, you know, etc, etc, etc. But what is actually the thing that we have to keep in mind is that these, um, you know, if we look in the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon, the Arab country, right, this is the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon took place after Israel invaded Lebanon during 1982 Lebanon war. Okay, and subsequently retained its forces to support the Christian South Lebanon army in southern Lebanon. Okay, so now we have to see that these are actually siding and allying with non-Muslim sects and groups to fight against the Muslims, right? And <clears throat> this is in south of Lebanon, you know, it's not something... Even we go to see in Golan Heights, okay, Golan Heights is in Syria, okay, it's Al-Julan, right? Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's in the Levant, it's occupied by uh, Israel. Right, you can see here, this is where Julan is. This is Syria here. Julan Heights is here. Okay, Israeli occupied, you can see. Israeli occupied, it says here. This area, all of it in Syria, is occupied by Israel. It's not part of Israel. So why is Israel committing these great violences? Plus, we see the great Jerusalem means no churches and no mosques. Even in Israel, they're not allowing mosques to be built anymore. 
and they're not allowed to, allowing churches to be built anymore except they're turning them into synagogues and museums. Even if we go to the Quran chapter 5 verse 82, Allah says you will surely find the most intense of the people in animosity toward the believers to be the Jews. Now this is clear, I've explained many times the people of Banu Quraidah when they made a treaty with the Muslims, they Banu Quraidah betrayed the Muslims, broke it, allied with the pagans of Quraysh who were fighting against the Muslims. Okay, so this is why it shows that uh, the Jews at that time were a type of sect of Jews that became peers to the Muslims, right? They allied with the pagans. Okay, you will surely find to be the Jews and those who associate others with Allah, meaning the polytheists. As Allah says here, That the most people you find their enemies to those who believe, meaning Muslims, are the Jews and those who are polytheists. Now we understand from that that the polytheists of Mecca fought against the Muslims, right? And we understand that they also allied with the Jews against the Muslims. Uh, you know, the Jews of Medina, Banu Quraytha, Banu Nadir, right? So, uh, And you will find those who are nearest to them in affection to those who believe, who say we are Christians, right? Uh, the Christians, uh, you know, if you look at the countries in Israel, for example, um, they don't, they, they kill all Muslims, they do not have mercy on Muslims. In the Western countries, such as like Christian ruled countries, such as Canada and European countries, you don't find that much hatred and violence against uh, the Muslims as much as the Jews of Israel have against them. Um, plus, we have to understand something that those who, even when Allah says, those who seek others besides Allah, you know, those who are the polytheists, who are one of the enemies of the believers, if you look in Burma, you know the Buddhists, they are polytheists, right? They are pagans. The Buddhists, what are they doing to the Muslims in Burma? They are killing them. They are slaughtering them. The Hindus, for example, they've been in big enemies to the Muslims in, uh, in uh, Pakistan and in India and basically everywhere. And Modi, he's actually allying with Israel, you know, again, to get support from him and to, you know, basically uh, hurt more Muslims in Kashmir and other areas. And the hadith that Ritwan was showing, it was talking about the last day, the days, meaning before the day of resurrection, okay? So that means the, the Muslims, uh, you know, the Jews will uh, get into a war with the Muslims because basically if you can look in Israel right now in Palestine, uh, they are killing the Muslims there. So the Muslims will have, have the right to defend themselves against these crimes and killings of children, right? And uh, plus, I don't know why this guy is always defending Jews while in the Torah. God urges the Jews in the Torah to kill uh, Amalekite babies and men, women, children, and animals. So I would like right now Ridwan to condemn the terrorist acts of Israel that is going against the Palestinians there. Okay. And, uh, you know, I would like him to condemn any act that goes violence against Muslims as well. Now, as for me, I condemn any action that goes against innocent people. I condemn the uh, killing of Christians, the killing of non-Muslims, apostates. I condemn the killing of uh, Jews. I condemn, you know, the killing of any single person that is innocent. Um, as for the types of uh, people who are involved in war, then these people should be dealt with according to the army. Like, let me give you an example. If a person was coming to kill you with a knife, do you have a right to defend yourself against him? Or with a weapon, he's coming to you to kill you with a weapon, killing your children, killing your kids, um, bringing pain upon you unjustly and uh, uh, being oppressive upon you? I think every single pers person should condemn this oppression.
right? Uh, now, I also condemn the killing of uh, innocent Israeli uh, civilians who are living in Israel, okay? That, uh, you know, that they have uh, no, um, uh, you know, um, they don't have any sin, right? And they are not fighting against the Muslims uh, by using weapons or sources of war. Uh, this is only for, un I, I condemn any unjust action done to any type of people, whether it be Muslims, Jews, Christians, and every single you know, people. I condemn ISIS as well, and uh, I want to want to do the same right now and condemn the violent acts of the Jews of Israel, the Zionists, particularly. Um, so now we go to uh, chapter sixty of the Quran, verse eight. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous toward them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act just. The next verse, Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion, forbids that you make allies of them. And whoever makes allies of them, it is those who are the wrongdoers. Uh, this is the verse here, you know, showing that it is not permissible to kill any innocent person of the non-Muslims at all, right? And it's particularly common to those who fight against a certain type of uh, Muslims, you know, and these certain type of Muslims have the right to defend themselves from their family being killed, their innocent children being killed, their babies being killed, uh, you know, from uh, the, the are basically using, uh, to, to, uh, you know, to defend themselves for, against oppression, right? And as I used the example before, if someone comes to you with a knife and tries to kill you, would you not defend yourself? Of course you would. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, stay away from apostasy and from uh, Ridwan.